Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday evening service. Hope you're doing well. We're going to begin our service with a song that expresses what we are, channels only to our Lord that we might be used for his service. Amy Carmichael once said, make me thy fuel, O flame of God. May that be the request of our hearts this evening. You can remain seated. If you'd like to use your hymnals, it's 477. We'll sing this one and then the one right across the page. 477. How I praise Thee, precious Savior, that Thy love laid hold of me. Thou hast saved and cleansed and filled me, that I might Thy channel be. Channels only, blessed Master, but with all Thy wondrous power. Flowing through us, Thou canst use us, Every day and every hour Emptied that thou shouldst fill me A clean vessel in thy hand With no power but as thou givest Graciously with each command Channels only, blessed Master but with all thy wondrous power flowing through us thou canst use us every day and every hour witnessing thy power to save me setting free from self and sin thou who boughtest to possess me in thy fullness, Lord, come in. Channels only, blessed Master, but with all thy wondrous power. Flowing through us, thou canst use us every day and every hour. Jesus, fill now with thy Spirit hearts that full surrender know that the streams of living water from our inner man may flow channels only blessed master but with all thy wondrous power flowing through us thou canst use us every day and every hour and right across the page is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid your heart does the spirit control you can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him to him your body and soul let's sing this hymn of confession as well please <clears throat> have longed for sweet peace and for faith to increase and have earnestly fervently prayed but you cannot have rest or be perfectly blessed until all on the Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Does your heart, does the Spirit control? You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield Him your body and soul. Would you walk with the Lord in the light of His Word and have peace and contentment always? You must do His sweet will from be free from all ill on the altar. Speak. 
spirit control You can only be blessed And have peace and sweet rest As you yield him your body and soul We'll sing verse 4 as the last Who can tell all the love He will send from above Oh, how happy our hearts will be made Oh, what fellowship sweet We shall share at His feet When our all on the altar is laid Is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid your heart does the spirit control you can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul amen good singing all right thank you all so much well good evening I hope you've had a good Wednesday. I tell you, it's been, uh, this uh, hot weather's carrying right over into August, isn't it? <laughs> but uh, I thank you so much for being here this evening. I do uh, want to give you just a few announcements, and then we're going to start going over some prayer requests. So if you have any, please uh, be ready to give those. Uh, this Sunday, we will be having the Saints Alive Sunday, so we look forward to that for those that apply. And please be remembering, coming up in September, uh, just a little over uh, a few weeks from now, we will be having our starting back, our ladies and men's Bible study. It will be on Wednesday evenings. Uh, ladies will be in the gym. Men will be back here in the auditorium. So we look uh, forward to that. There has been some flyers that's put out on the uh, welcome desk today and will be out there uh, that if, for the Saturday, September 10th uh, from 11 to 3 p.m. for Pastor Greg and Ms. Gales. Uh, retirement fellowship so if you like to get that put that on the refrigerator or you need someone you like to give that to there should be some back there on the welcome desk and i appreciate it if you would check on that i do i want to give you a little update on mr harold they're still waiting to move him but um they 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 think maybe they have uh found out what's wrong with him but uh he will be moved to Big Duke, but he is still very sick. I, I think to, today or yesterday uh, would have been about two weeks they've had him in the hospital. So, And he had been in a little short stay even before that. So uh, it could be as much as uh, two and a half weeks or so Mr. Harold's been in the hospital. And he's still very weak. So please, please be praying for Mr. Harold Richard. And uh, also... Um, Continue to pray for Mr. Vance Clayton, but he is doing better a little bit at a time. He's recovering, uh, so please continue to pray for Mr. Vance. Also, I'm uh, just asking you to please continue to remember Miss Sarah Christie and her mom. I've been mentioning them just about every time. Uh, just uh, very sick ladies, especially her mom, so please be praying for them. Miss Thelma Hester, want to remember her, and uh, also uh, uh, Ms. Linda Hughes, uh, please continue to remember her. Any other prayer requests this evening? Um, this is a time we set aside to have prayer. Does anybody have any prayer requests we need to mention this evening? Yes, Miss Karen. It's your brother? Mother. Okay. And then tomorrow? All right. All right. Anybody else this evening? Yes, Ms. White. So we pray for Mr. James Wood. This is Ms. White's brother. Your grandbaby doing okay? All right. Good, good, good. Miss Carolyn? Yeah. 
Anderson. Anybody else? Yes, Miss Buffy. Absolutely. Awana will be starting back real soon. Um, kids already going back to school, starting school back too. Yes, sir, Mr. Bernie. for Mr. Bernie's friends battling cancer. Yep. Wow. Mr. Todd? Yes, sir. So, uh, on Friday, the rest of this is when you have the clay shoe tournament. And then you have the running race for safety. And then the event goes to the road. Yes, on Friday, the Durham Rescue Mission will have a fundraiser, a clay shoe at Deep River, Sporting Clays. Pray for safety. Yes, ma'am. Can you explain to the member um, how the people who either can't afford food or don't have access to food? And I've, I've heard food pantries running out of food. Right. All right. All right. Well, yes, David. Mr. Hill. All right. I heard something else. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't hear much, but I did hear something else. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much for allowing us to be here this Wednesday evening. Lord, what a blessing, Heavenly Father. Uh, Lord, to be able to get together and come to church. Uh, Lord, it is a privilege that you've bestowed upon us, and I thank you so much for that. Lord, we do want to mention these requests uh, this evening. I pray for Mr. Harold Richard, dear Lord, you just please help him, pray for his family, and help them, dear Lord, as they're trying to uh, make sure the doctors and all do what they're supposed to do. And so we do pray for his doctors. I pray that they'd be able to help him, Heavenly Father. He's very weak, as you know, and I just ask you to please put your hand upon him right now. And Lord, we do want to pray for Miss Sarah Christie and her mom. And Lord, I ask you to please guide and direct there. Mr. Vance Clayton, thank you for him doing better. Lord, it's good to have Mr. Tommy Garner here tonight. He's doing better. And just thank you so much for that. And Ms. Thelma Hester, the Lord, we ask you to please help her. Ms. Linda Hughes, Lord, I, I do ask you to please guide and direct in these situations to the Lord. I also pray for Ms. Carol Curry and my mom, Ms. Sandra Hall, that you'd help them. And Lord, there's a lot of other people on our prayer list this evening. And ask you to work in their help with their health issues, dear Lord, and just guide and direct them. Lord, we do uh, pray for Miss Karen's mom, dear Lord, you just please help her. Pray that you give God some direction there, especially tomorrow. I think she said it was her birthday. And Lord, just please bless. And pray for Mr. James Woods, dear Lord, you just please help him at this time. Uh, Lord, we do pray for this Mr. Anderson that was mentioned. Uh, Heavenly Father, I ask you to please guide and direct and help with that. And Lord, we do uh, pray for uh, Juana starting back and also uh, um, kids going back to school, dear Lord, homeschooling starting back and things that's going on there. I ask you to please guide and direct in that. Lord, I pray for Mr. Bernie's friends that he mentioned this evening, dear Lord, just very sick, Heavenly Father. And Lord, the body's failing. I ask you to please guide and direct and help them. And, and Lord, we just uh, ask you to be uh, with this uh, Mr. Hill that uh, was mentioned to the Lord, just a lot of surges. Lord, please guide and direct in that and help in that situation. 
And Lord, we do want to pray for Miss Fay Ray, the Lord, you just please help her. Lord, I do pray for people that's uh, dealing with hunger, the Lord, that's uh, especially the food pantries and stuff. I'm sure with things going up, people not making the donations they normally would make. And Lord, we ask you to please guide and direct in that situation. Oh, we do want to pray for the mission as they have a fundraiser uh, at Deep River Sport and Clays. Dear Lord, pray for safety there, people traveling while they're there, Heavenly Father. And Lord, that it'll be a benefit, dear Lord, to be able to help. And Lord, we just ask you to bless Bible Baptist Church. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'd work in that accordingly. Lord, that uh, we would see people come to know you as their Lord and Savior, Heavenly Father. And Lord, that we would be a salt and light to the area that you've planted us. Lord, I pray for the... Um, uh, guide us in direction, dear Lord, that we would bring glory to your name, uh, Lord, to, 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 to grow more and more in love with you, Heavenly Father, that our lives will reflect that we are Christians, dear Lord, and that we do belong to you and that we're your children. And Lord, I pray that you keep us safe tonight as we have this service, and I pray, dear Lord, you would bless the teaching of your word, dear Lord, you just give wisdom and guide us in direction from that. Lord, we love you. I pray for our services coming up on Sunday, dear Lord. That you just bless and God direct Pastor Greg as he brings a message and also the senior saints. Lord, that that would, that would be a, a wonderful time, Heavenly Father. Lord, I do want to pray for families that's lost loved ones in the past week or two, dear Lord, the funerals that have taken place. And pray that you just work and God direct in that and help those families. Lord, I, I may have missed some requests. I pray that I didn't, dear Lord, but I know that you heard them. And Lord, we thank you, dear Lord, that we can bring our request before you, dear Lord, and we can pray and talk to you at any point in time. And Lord, we just want to give you the glory and honor this evening. We love you and praise your name above every name in all existence. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. If you will open your Bibles up this evening to uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. We had started this a few weeks ago. Uh, where we had uh, looked at some questions that were being answered in this section and just want to go back and try to examine them a little closer and finish out. Uh, probably take a couple of Wednesday nights, if not more, to be able to finish this out. But I just want to uh, uh, let you see that what Paul is asking here and what he's, what he's going over right here is to get us to see that what we have in Christ is secure. Uh, we'll, we'll read through the passage in just a moment, uh, as we did a few weeks ago, but how that is secure is because of who God is. And because of who he is, that makes our salvation secure. Because this is what, this is what we need to remember, this right here. God is the one to determine if we're accepted or if we're not. He set the rule, and he set it through his word. And Jesus Christ dying and being uh, buried and rose again uh, from the dead is what we have to put our faith and trust in to save us from our sin because that's the, that's the price that he paid for us. And so we need to remember that God decided that's what it was going to take for us to be righteous, for us to be forgiven, for us to be, be able to stand before him uh, uh, justified. And so when we think about that, God, we need to remember that it's all about Christ. It's all about what he's done, Christ being the God-man. And I want to look at that this evening because Paul asked a series of questions right here to get us to think, to get us to realize, to, to shock us into the thought of what's most important in our life. What are you basing your salvation on? We know it's on Jesus Christ, but, I, but it's to get us to think because I ask you this evening, do we live on a daily basis as if you are going to heaven. I mean, think about that. Uh, we see all the world around us is falling apart. These are things that God has given us, he showed us. But sometimes we can get so caught up in the day-to-day -day things that's going on in our life that we forget what we actually have in Christ and what, what he freely has given us, what he has uh, blessed us with uh, and, and, and who we are in him. And that was the message last time. What do we have in Christ? What has he blessed us with? How, we, how should we be encouraged in realizing who we are as a child of God? And that's very, very important that we realize that. <clears throat> with, us, with our reading this evening, I want to start in Romans chapter 8 and look in verse 31. Romans chapter 8 and look in verse 31. It says, 
What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall we not with him also freely, how shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? Is it Christ? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, it is, uh, excuse me, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When we started this a few weeks ago, uh, we, 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 we went through and we read all of this and it was, you know, I wanted to be, still want to be an encouragement to you here on a Wednesday night, midweek. I want you to realize what you have in the Lord, what he has blessed you with for you to be his child. And so I want to go back and tonight we're just going to look at verse 31 and, and build a foundation of a basis. How can all this be said for you? As a child of God, I hope there's not anyone here tonight that does not know Christ as their personal Savior. I pray that you realize, even this evening, that God loves you so tremendously that you, He wants you to be His child. He did all of this so that you could be a child of God. He 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 died on the cross. He was buried. He rose again. He wants you to be in His family. It is your choice as an individual. Uh, if, if you do not choose to accept Christ as your personal Savior, God's going to allow you to be able to do that. But you must realize that if you do not choose Christ as your personal Savior, if you do not put your faith and trust in Him, you will be eternally separated from God, period. And in a place that He is deemed as a lake of fire. For all eternity, completely separated from God. But He does not want that for you. He loves you. He cares for you. And so with that said, I want us to look at what allows God to be able to do what he does for us. It is because he is God. So, Almighty, God Almighty. Look at verse 31. It says, what shall we say to these things? So when we look down through there, as we just read them, what shall we say to these things? Verse 1, if God be for us, who can be against us? So, let's think through that right there for just a second. If God be for us, if God is for you, if he is on your side, I, I love, I write down, uh, you can write down right beside of this. I have it written in my Bible. And, you know, we, we, we got time. We'll go look at that. Look at Psalm 118 and verse 6. Look at Psalm 100 and verse, one, uh, 118 verse 6. I love what the psalmist says right here. If you will turn there just for a moment. But I got this written down right there. In Psalm 118 and verse 6, what does the psalmist say? And you know I love the psalms. In Psalm 118 verse 6 says, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what, what can man do unto me. Now, I've got that written down right beside of uh, the very end, the tail end of uh, verse uh, 30, uh, chapter, Romans chapter 8, verse 31. Why is that so important that we, we ask these questions? Because there are times in our life that we can get down, we can get depressed, uh, we, can, we, can, we, we think in our minds that Satan can mess with our minds, sometimes he can cause us problems. We must realize who we are in the Lord. And these are times where you get your Bible out, or in your memorization, if you, if, you, if you can do that, where you get your Bible out and you realize who is on your side. I ask you tonight, if you know Christ is your personal Savior, that means God is on your side. He is for you. His, all the power in heaven is for you as an individual. 
Uh, it doesn't matter what happens in this world. It doesn't matter if there's a nuclear explosion. It doesn't matter what, what's happening at your work. It doesn't matter what's going on in your personal life. God is for you. He is on your side. And so when we examine things like this, we need to realize that God is all powerful and that he is on your side. So Psalm uh, 118 and verse 6 says, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man, what can man do unto me? Now I ask you this question. What, do, you, do you know, can you find verses like that in God's word to claim them at the right time? Because tonight's going to be a service that I'm going to give you a, a group of verses that where you can go through when things are happening in your life. And, you know, a lot of times uh, our feelings change with the wind. Sometimes you may die. I just don't feel saved. And you things are going on and things are happening in your life. This is when you go back and you claim these promises. What does God's word say? Paul is asking that's a, that question, that rhetorical question. He's like, in verse 31, what shall we say to these things? In other words, what do you say about what's being said right here? Do you realize, do you understand that you are more than conquerors? Why? Because God is for you. He is on your side. <coughs> so I, I want you to see, we're going to look at, that's what we're going to look at tonight, is we're going to combine those two questions right there in verse 31. Say, if God... What shall, you, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Back to this point. I was just a little side note there of Psalms 100 verse 18 and verse 6 that I got wrote down right there. I, I, just, I, I want you to realize that when, when Paul is writing this, when God gives him this to write in the, here in Romans chapter 8, he wants us to realize that it, he's expecting us to know when we read, if God be for us, who can be against us? He is assuming that you understand exactly who God is. That he is all powerful. That he is almighty. There is none other. There is only one true God. I want tonight to make sure that you have the, uh, the, the, the verses to be able to look at. Now, we're not going to exhaust this by any means because God's word is full of them. But I want to give you some verses tonight that you can realize that God is for you and what it means for God to be for you. That he is all powerful. That he, it, you, you have his attributes. And we're going to mainly tonight, we're going to look at him being the almighty. That he is the most powerful. There is none other. And I want to give you some scripture to based on that. Because if God is for you, if he is on your side, uh, you are his child, you are his responsibility, who on, in any existence can stand against you? Now, I ask that question by allowing you to be able to understand this. I want to know, I ask myself this and I ask you, am I living like I believe that? Am I living like that I operate on a daily basis? It doesn't matter what another human being says. It doesn't matter what happens in this world. God is on my side. He is my God. He is my Heavenly Father. I don't care what else happens. He's on my side. I'm, he, I'm His responsibility. He's looking after me. Now, when we start to grasp that thought process and we actually start living our life on a daily basis like that, your life is going to be different. Your life is going to be changed because you're going to look at things in a different way. You're going to operate in a way that, that you really believe that God is on your side. And he is. God's word tells us. But we need to, we need to do what? We need to operate our daily living as that to be the truth. So I ask you tonight, is that true in your life? Or can we make adjustments in a way that we think in realizing that God is on your side, that he is for you. And it doesn't matter what else, what anybody else says, what anybody else does, that God is for you. You see, I am his responsibility. No man can defeat 
what God deems for me to be able to do. Whatever responsibilities, it, it might look bad. It's just like when Israel come back and, uh, you know, Joshua and Caleb were the only ones that said, let's, let's get to it, let's go after it. What did the rest of them say? Oh, they're too big. You see, they were operating as though their God was not capable of doing what he's capable of doing. You see, Joshua and Caleb were the only ones that had an understanding that God's on my side. Here in August of 2022, are you operating as though God is on your side? Because, see, we are we're up against the things that's going on in our generation, the particular time that God wanted us to live here on this earth. We are here right now. The obstacles that we face, the things that we have to go through, we're here right now. But the mission has not changed. God wants us to be a good witness for him. People should be able to see our lives. It is different. God asks us to be able to represent him in salt and light in this earth. But if we don't believe God is on our side, we cannot do what he's asked us to do. Because we're going to be living our life as though those giants are too big. Their walls are, 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 are fortified. I can't do anything about it. And you would be right saying that you can't do anything about it. But God has sent us forth in this world to be sought in light. And if our God is not in the right position in our heart and life, I mean, you can be a Christian, but you can live a life as a defeated Christian if you're not realizing that God is on your side, that he is for you. Because if he is for you, nobody or nothing can stop you to do in doing what he's asked you to do. We just He just can't do it. And so, because God is almighty. So, let's look at this right here. The truth is uh, that, 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 see, God is, has the ultimate power. That means there's none any stronger. Uh, it is unlimited. Uh, it never ends. You know, we can fill up a gas tank of gas and throw that power, that engine, or, or charge your engine, or whatever you're doing right now. Uh, it, you know, it's going to run out. But God's power never runs out. And it's the ultimate power. Nobody or nothing can stand against it. And he is your heavenly father. And so, to demonstrate God's power, I want us to start, and we're going to use our Bibles. I've tried to put them in pretty much order so it's, it, it make it a little bit easier on you. But I want you to go to first the Genesis chapter 1. I want you to look in Genesis chapter 1. If, if, if you don't start in your belief right there, uh, even as a Christian, if you have questions about who God is and what he's capable of doing, right here is where you need to engage in God's word and you need to get along with God and you need to start to realize that uh, no matter what this world says, no matter what anybody else says, this God's word is the truth. And we're going to get to that, Lord willing, in just a little while. But I want you to realize it starts right here in your understanding and your belief about God starts in Genesis chapter 1. And I'm just going to read down through verse 3, but we could go on. But for the sake of time, I, I, it's enough in those first three verses for you to get what I want you to understand right here about God's power. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And the darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, we could go on down through all that creation if we want to, but we're going to stop right there. And this is what I want you to understand. <clears throat> I'm going to have to, if I move around a little bit, I'm sorry, I apologize. I probably should have put a mic on. What I want you to see is this right here. When we, somebody, whoever it was, it was probably Mr. Stephen Bryant. It could have been somebody else this evening. Cut the lights on in this auditorium. He went over there and he pushed that button. Somebody did. And the lights came on in this auditorium. We know that that's capable of happen, happening because an electrician has wired this building so that these lights will come on when we turn the switch on. God did not have a switch when he turned on the lights of this world. He made it all. Now, I want us to grasp that perspective right there. In the beginning, God... I mean, just that thought process, you've got to understand there was none else. It was just him. Now, we know that to be the Trinity. It's throughout in this creation. You, have, you can see God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. 
You can see that. They were all a part of creation. That's not our lesson this evening. But what I want you to understand is this. He is creator of all. So how does that come into play? Well, for a Christian, it comes into play. Let's say, I'm going to use me as an example. And, and I'm, not, I'm not saying that we, we don't use our own minds, that God has given us, but this is how we rely on God. God made every, bit, every part of me. He made my eyes work the way, I'm, and you too, you're a human being. He made my eyes work the way that they ought to. He made this heart to pump blood, and mine's still pumping blood because I'm still talking. At the moment it stops, I'm going to collapse. He's the one that tells my brain that my heart has got to keep pumping and that I have to keep breathing and I have to have oxygen and it's got to flow through my body for me to be able to move my hand and do what I'm doing. I have to have all that happening. Who ultimately sustains that in your life as a child of God? God does. Now, this is what I have to wrap my mind around because when I'm going to put this into practice that God is all powerful and he's all knowing and he's for me, at the moment, and I'm speaking to Christians here this evening, at the moment that I accept Christ as my personal Savior, I will not live any longer than he wants me to. And nobody can take that life from me but him. That's the reality of our life. Okay? I don't matter how bad a car wreck you might be in. I don't ma it doesn't matter what might be going on in your life. God is the one that takes life from you, this, this life here. Now, we know our lives are eternal. You, you will live on for eternity. You're going to live on for eternity somewhere. Hopefully, I'm talking to Christians tonight, and you're going to be in heaven, okay? But we have to come to the reality of thinking that if God is for me, my life, my, I'm part of his creation. All of this belongs to him. I belong to him. I've been bought with a price. Jesus Christ paid that price on the cross for me. I'm not, I'm not saying too crazy stuff. I'm just saying we have to think correctly. I have to remind myself of this daily. Um, if, you were, if you were to, uh, my, my family on my daddy's side were notorious, and I hope I'm going to say this right. If you don't, somebody is welcome to correct me. Hypochondriac. That's something like somebody thinks there's always something wrong with them. On my father's side, they were like that. It was like, they hear somebody else got something. Oh, I got it. You know what I mean? And so I, I, I can see even that tendency in my own self. It's in my genetics to think that. Maybe just because I was around it so much. But they were somewhat like that. And so I, well, the reason I say that is, is it does not matter. God is going to take my life in some way, shape, or form. Now, that doesn't mean he is still sin to abuse your body. It's sin to be in a gluttonous person. It's sin to... To, but, but I must realize at some point I'm going to die if Christ is not returned. I have to rely on that because, see, there's so many people living a defeated life worried about what is going to happen to this body. I have to admit, sometimes I catch myself doing that. But I can't because if I, if I get, if the devil defeats me at that moment, then I cannot be what God would have me to be. I cannot operate the way God would have me to operate. I'm not operating as though God is on my side and is for me. And, he, and he's going to do whatever he needs to do to help me do what he's asked me to do. And then at that point, I go home to be with him. I hope I'm not hurting your feelings this morning, evening. But I want you to start to think correctly, biblically. God, you're part of God's creation. You, as a Christian, have been saved miraculously by the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. He's paid the price. You're a child of God. And I hope you understand that this evening. And, if, and when you walk out of here, if you get nothing else out of that, you realize God is for you. But it means much more than that because he's all powerful and he sustains every little part of our life. I tell so many people, sometimes when I, I ended up and I, I was like... Uh, things happening and I end up at a certain spot. I said, I'm not here by accident. I had not planned to be where I'm at, at at this particular moment, but I ended up here. And the reason I ended up here is because God wanted me. Why? Because God directs the steps of his children and he puts them in those positions because that's where he wants them at that moment. 
God is all powerful. He's all knowing. <laughs> so he knows those things about me. Let's continue on. Uh, that's just a little bit there in Genesis, but you must realize he is the creator. He's the one that sustains your life. Your, your life is sustained because that's what he wants. And at the moment he, it's time for you to come home, then your life here on this earth will end. And we have to live our life like that on a regular basis to think correctly. I hope I'm not messing you up too bad this evening, but I want you to think correctly. I don't want you to live defeated life. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10. And I, I, uh, I know there's some things that we are skipping and I just was not able to cover it all this evening. These are just a few. But these are things that we need to make sure that you know of because when, you, when you're being defeated in the way that this world, things of this world, and whatever's happening in your life, you need to know scripture that you can go to so that God can help lift you back up to the correct way of thinking. Deuteronomy chapter 10, look at verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 10, look at verse 17. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords is great God, a, a mighty and a terrible which regardeth not the persons nor taketh rewards. He doth execute judgment of the fatherless and the wit and the widow and the love uh, lo and loveth the stranger and giving them food and raiment. You say, Brother Jimmy, what is that telling me? He's telling you there is none other. Don't make anything else your God. What did he want to do? What did he want Israel to know? What, what aggravated him so bad about them is that they would go into other countries and pick up some false God and then start worshiping him. And he doesn't want us to do the same thing here in, in the way that we live in our daily walk. And he doesn't want us to pick up some and, and put more dependence on anything else except for him. Doctors are good. I love them. I appreciate them. I appreciate all the work that they go through. And, and I appreciate medication. And I appreciate these things. But you cannot put your dependence on that. You put it in God and allow him to work in that. I tell people all the time, a lot of times when I'm praying with them, I appreciate it. I pray for the doctors. But God works through them to help us. And he gives us enough understanding that, of things that we need to do on our own uh, to be able to what? Do what he would have us to do. But don't put your dependence on that. Because if we put our dependence on anything but God, we're going to be miserably, miserably taken advantage of. We're going to, it's, going to, it's, going to be, it's going to make our life miserable because it's going to be failure at that point. God never fails us. He never, he never does something that shouldn't be done. He says, trust him. Regardless of the situation, trust him. You say, Brother Jimmy, I'm sick. You've got to trust God. Is this the way that God is going to use to bring you home to be with him? And maybe so. We do not know. Only he knows that, and that is his responsibility. But he is what? For the Lord your God is God, is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not the persons, nor taketh reward. He doesn't need anything from us. We're, he's not, he, he, he desires you to be a part of his family, his life. But that's it. He doesn't, he doesn't need us. He wants us. And I'm going to be honest with you. I'd rather be wanted and needed any day. Because I'm not going to be able to, to sustain what God wants me to sustain. He is the one that's got to do it through me. I, can, I only operate, I only doing what I'm doing because he allows it. And so we must think like that. But he's the God of gods and Lord of lords. There is none other. Um, he's the mighty. Uh, look at Isaiah 44. Go to Isaiah 44. In Isaiah 44, uh, look at verse 23. Isaiah 44, and look at verse 23. Look at how, I want you to see how God is describing what, what his ability is right here. In Isaiah uh, 44, in verse 23, it says, Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. I don't know about you, but these high-powered uh, telescopes that we're seeing, these pictures that we're seeing, and it, it's just amazing. 
And people, we know, if you, you know, they don't understand it. The ones that's created these things and show these pictures, you know, they just, they're looking for another planet. They're looking for other stuff. And we know that all that's a problem, but God made it. He's the one that created all that. He says, sing, O you heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, ye mountains, uh, O forest, and every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and, <clears throat> and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. He, he that, he that uh, uh, excuse me, my eyes are not working the best. In the he that frustrated the, the tokens of the liars and maketh, uh, maketh the, uh, divers mad and, and turneth wise men backward and, and melteth their knowledge into foolishness. Man's foolishness to God, uh, man's wisdom to God is foolishness. It's, it's God that uses the wisdom that he giveth man and giveth the ones that know him as a personal savior that make the difference. Because uh, we're, we're just not capable of even really completely understanding the things that we're talking about tonight. Uh, that confirmeth the word of his servant and performeth the counsel of his messengers that saith to Jerusalem, thou shalt be inhabited and to the cities of Judah, thou shalt be built. And I will rise up the decayed places thereof that saith to the deep, be, be dry and I will dry up the rivers. He saith to Cyrus, he is my shepherd and shall perform all my measure, pleasure, even saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built and, thy, and to the temple, thy foundation shall be laid. In other words, I want you to see the details that God, even using us, even in the things of, of allowing human beings to do what they do, is because of God is directing it. And I don't know about you realize it, but God directs you as his child on a regular basis. Sometimes we don't pay any attention to it because we're not in the position to be able to do that because maybe sin in our life, maybe by disobedience, maybe not trusting in the Lord, not relying on him. But God has a plan for your life and he wants to orchestrate it every single day. And he allows the Holy Spirit to live within you, to guide and direct you to be able to do what his will is. My question is, are we allowing God to be able to do that or, we, or, 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 or are we forsaking the power of God that worketh through us because he is for you. He is for you. He can do whatever he wants to do. We just read many things, right? That he can do whatever. And nothing is impossible to him. He can do whatever he wants to do at any point in time. And he has a plan. And it's going to be played out exactly the way he wants it for this earth, for our life. And so I ask you, are you allowing God to work in your life because he's capable of doing it all? Look at, look at chapter 46 in Isaiah. Look at 46 and look at verse 9 and 10. In Isaiah 46, you should be able to turn maybe just one page. Isaiah 46, verse 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things, <clears throat> the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. This is God saying this right here. This is your heavenly father if you know him as your personal savior. That's why we should, when, when Paul writes that right there in, 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 in uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 31, what do you say to these things? Well, if you don't know enough about God to say anything and, and put it into practice, then that, that's our fault. That's why we're going over this this evening, because I don't want you to be able to do that. I want you to realize when you read that one verse right there and you realize God is on your side, there's nothing impossible to him. Whatever he's asking you to do, he's going to implement it through you. Make sure you make sure you confess your sin and make it right and live for him because he is for you. And we must have an understanding of that. We're not uh, through right quick. Let's go to uh, Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. Tried to make it in order so we weren't going back and forth. But I hope you're writing these verses down because I love all of them. And I especially love that Isaiah 46, 9 and 10 there. But in Daniel, uh, look at chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4. 
Daniel chapter 4, look at verses 34 and 35. Daniel chapter 4, look at verses 34 and 35. What does God tell us about himself? In verse 34, it says, At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes into heaven, and mine understanding uh, was returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised, uh, praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion. His kingdom is from generation to generation, all, and, and all the inhabitants of the earth are uh, <clears throat> reputed as nothing, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand, nor say unto him, what doest thou? You see, Nebuchadnezzar come to an understanding right there about God. God had to do something in his life to get his attention. I ask you tonight, what's God going to have to do in your life to get your attention? To help you see that he is who he says he is. Nebuchadnezzar come to realization that God is God of gods and he is almighty. And he understood that it was nothing he could do about it. That God was going to do what he was going to do. And he, God just wanted him to be a part of what was happening. And when Nebuchadnezzar uh, decided he was going to rise himself up above God, what did God do to him? He showed him who was what? In control. You see, Nebuchadnezzar had an understanding of who God was. I want to go to the New Testament now. Look, go all the way past Romans and look at Hebrews chapter 4. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. In Hebrews chapter 4, and my page is right there. Hebrews chapter 4. And look at verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to dividing the sunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and opened unto the eyes of him whom we have, whom, excuse me, whom we have to do. You say, Brother Jim, that's, I thought that's talking about God's word. It is. God is the one. His word is that powerful. Look, it is like a scalpel that can separate the things, well, like a surgeon is operating. He can separate things that he doesn't want to cut. And it goes into the depths of our heart and our intentions. And I want us to realize this evening, no matter what your intention is, and see, this is what's wild about our minds sometimes and because of our sin nature. We can actually think that we're doing what God would have us to do and we can be deadly wrong about it. Because we've not allowed God to work in our life. We could have sin that we're hoarding in our life and we've not allowed him. And what we need to do is examine our life on a regular basis, sometimes sometimes multiple times during the day. Am I doing what God would have me to do? God, show me. Use your word on a daily basis. And that's why it's so important to be in God's word. Use your word on a daily basis to dissect the whatever I'm headstrong in the direction I'm going, is that what you want me to do? Because if it's not, then you, it's sin. It's wrong. You see, and God knows the intentions of our heart. And he uses the Holy Spirit. He uses his word to show us and develop us and grow us so that we have an understanding of what he wants us to do. Uh, verse 3, a lot of times people read, um, excuse me, verse 13. A lot of people, times people read verse 12, but they leave out verse 13. It says, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. Get this. And all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him whom we have to do. In other words, there's nothing in your life that God doesn't know, already know about. He knows more about us than we even know. We can think sometimes, you know what, I really need to do something about that. But you know what, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to keep operating. And we can, we can treat God like a human being to think where, you know, it's okay. And because he hadn't done nothing about it yet, that it's, that it's all right. But I'm here to tell you, it's not all right with God if it's sin. It's just his grace and mercy he's bestowing upon you to give you chance after chance of a chance to make it right. 
And if we don't do something about it, he will because he is a perfect heavenly father. And he will do what it takes to get our attention so that we operate in realizing that God is for me. He is, he is, he stands with me. He, he loves his children. I, again, I say I'm his responsibility and he's going to do whatever it takes to get your attention. You say, well, I'm just going to change this and do that. Well, I'm telling you, if you don't make it right, you might change something. But whatever it was, it's going to follow you right along. Your wrong way of thinking is just going to go right along with you. Just because you change an environment has nothing to do with your relationship and your fellowship with God Almighty. If you have fellowship with Him, it's because you have, unconfessed, you have confessed sin in your life and you're making everything right before Him. But if you're not living your life the way God would have you to live it, you're not doing what God would have you to do, God knows about it. Nothing, everything is open to Him. He can see it all. He understands it. And He's pleading with you to make the right choice to make sure that He's number one and that you realize that He is God Almighty and you're not putting anything before Him. That you're loving him the way that he would have you love you, him with all your uh, soul, heart, mind, and might. Because that's what God wants. He wants you to let him have it all and realize that that's what he wants for you. The best it can possibly be, even on this earth, even right now at this particular moment. Because God cares for you because you're his child. One last, one last verse that I want you to look at, and uh, you can turn, is 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7. 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7 as we close this evening. And I'm going the wrong way. I've been, so, I've been going to the right so much this evening, I tried to go that way again. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and look at verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and look at verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. Be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor let his uh, <clears throat> prisoner, but be the partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. You see, God loves and cares for you. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of the power and of love and of sound mind. Go back to Romans chapter 8 this evening as we close. When you read a verse such as verse 31, and it says, what, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? I hope after this evening you can look at that verse right there and say, I can say to these things. Because God is for me. He is on my side. And I want my life to reflect that I have Almighty God. Though nothing being impossible to Him. He is on my side. He's directing my life in the way that He would have me to go on a regular basis. And if there's anything in your life that you need to give up and allow Him to have full control, you need to do it this evening. Because you're not going to live to your full potential as a Christian without allowing God to have full control. He, he deserves it. He made you. He saved you. He wants the best for you. You can release it and let him have it. Because he is the one. You serve blood, Jimmy. I don't like what's happening right now. Well, I can tell you this right here. At the end of the day, you have no other choice as a Christian but to trust God. We just do not. That's, that's, that's just, a, just the honest truth. Sometimes I don't like that. I'm be honest with you. We as human beings, we ain't smart enough to know any better. But God is, and he loves and cares for you. And he put the Holy Spirit within you to help you understand that no matter what is happening, and no matter how good or bad it seems, is he first in your life? That nothing else comes before him. There are no other gods before him in your life. Because God wants you to know that he is for you. And if he is for you, Who can be against you? Who, 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 can, who can take you out? Nobody. Satan can't do anything about it. Another human can't do anything about it. The government can't do anything about it. Society can't do anything about it. They can try to shame you. They can try to make you look bad. They can do all, but they can't do anything about it. Because God is the one that is all powerful and he is on your side. When we reflect our life this evening as we close... I ask you to please, please reflect your life this evening. And as you go to bed tonight, am I living as though God is on my side? 
all, the almighty, all-powerful God. There's none other. The God of gods, the Lord of lords. This aid that knows every single detail about my life, whether I like it or I don't, he knows it. He's capable of helping me, whatever that is. He allows me to be able to do everything that I do. I don't walk. I don't talk. I don't get up. I don't sit down. I don't do anything unless I don't breathe unless God allows me because I belong to him. And that's the way God would have us to live our life and understanding that. I don't have anything unless God allows me to have it. I don't do anything unless he allows me to do it. And that is the way God would have us to see because that is the way that God would have us to operate. When we do that, when we realize that, then we're going to be willing to do the things that he has asked us to do because it really doesn't matter about anything else. Is that we operate and live our life as though God is for you. And if he is for you, who can be against you? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your word here this evening. Lord, this is powerful, the Lord. This is this realization of living a life like this on a regular basis. That's what Paul is asking his question. What do you say to these things? What, what do you understand about this? What, what, what is happening in your life? Do you realize that God is for you? And if he is for you, who can be against you? And then he goes on through the rest of this chapter right here. And he just time after time after time. And we're going to continue to examine that that we realize that these things that we think are so powerful and that they stand, seem to stand in our way, they're nothing to you. Another human being, their foolishness in their thought process if they're not for you and not for your word and not, don't know who you are. They're not powerful, not up, to you, not, against, not, up, not, not up against you. And Lord, we belong to you, so you, the things that you would have us to do, you want us to do them and, and do them with exactly the way that you ask us to do. And don't get defeated by what's going on around us to live a life that brings glory and honor to you. That's what that means, that I love you with all my heart and soul and might and strength. So that what? So the, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart is acceptable in your sight. Because you are my Savior. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Please, please help us this evening. Change our hearts so that we operate as though you are God Almighty. Which you are, regardless of what we might be thinking. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. All right, we are dismissed.